Kill a Mockingbird is, in essence, a coming-of-age story about a young girl named Scout who lives in a small town in the South, and the issues she faces when her father Atticus is tasked with defending a black man in court. There are tons and tons of themes to get through, so let's get right to it. Family, I have to say, is the most foundational concept in this entire novel because it sets the stage for everything that happens after. Scout's relationships with her brother Jem and her father Atticus give her the perspectives through which she sees the world as she ages and becomes more mature through the events of the novel. So apply a nice layer of foundation and cover up any spots and marks for a good solid base upon which to build the rest of our story. Up next is the concept of judgment and justice, both of which play huge roles as Atticus is a white lawyer tasked with defending a black man in court against a very racially biased jury. As the story unfolds, it becomes more and more apparent that judgment and justice have much less to do with truth and much more to do with prejudice. So how else to portray judgment but with eyebrows? Fill them in nice and dark with a high arch for that extra dash of judgment. Now to the highlight, which we are using to represent morality, or rather, a moral high ground. Throughout the story, Atticus tries to make sure that his children get a proper moral education, that they know the difference between right and wrong. But on the flip side of that, we have the hypocrisy demonstrated by many other adults in their small southern society. Scout is constantly faced with people who are unsympathetic to the deeply rooted racism Scout feels so conflicted by. So here, we're contouring our cheeks to symbolize the moral hypocrisy, to give the moral high ground a little contrast and the entire look and story a bit more dimension. The concept of youth is one of the most important that the book explores, because the fact that the story is told through the eyes of a six-year-old girl gives the entire narrative a certain kind of freedom. The freedom to question things as children do, to be endlessly curious as to why things are the way they are. Scout's youth undergoes a series of changes as she learns and grows through the events of the novel, but her childishness is nonetheless one of the most important defining features. Here, I've chosen a pretty pink grapefruit color to represent that youthful kind of innocence. However, right on the edge of that youth is an ever-looming sense of fear. Fear of growing up, of the unknown, of the things that they do know, and the world that they'll be forced to live in. Boo Radley, for instance, is the character incarnation of that fear. The children make up stories to feed their morbid curiosities, and his presence gives the story a very gothic edge. So shade in the outer corners of your eyes with a dark steel gray color and blend it right into that youthful pink tone to give it a hint of gothic unknown. But all hope is not lost, because even in the grayest, bleakest moments, there is compassion and forgiveness. Boo is shown not only to be kind and caring to the children, but Scout, at the end of the novel, is described as reflecting upon all that he's done for her and her brother, and regretting that they are unable to pay him back for his kindness. So go ahead and add a little shimmer of compassion to the inner corners of her eyes to open them right up. Then, just to give the look a little framework, we have to consider the backdrop of the story. A small southern town in which everyone knows everything about each other. And life is simple, at least from the outside looking in. So, add just the lightest layer of mascara and remember that a little goes a long way, and not everything is as simple as it seems. Now, for the blush, which here represents femininity and womanhood. Women have very little rights in the novel and are subject to the men in their lives, but Scout learns that being a lady can take just as much courage as it takes to be a tomboy, if not more so because you gotta wear a dress while doing it. So dust on a layer of shimmery pink blush for a courageous feminine glow. And finally, 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 for the key point to this look and the key concept for the book, 
race, represented by a dark lip because just like the issues of race, it's right on the lips. Everyone sees it and notices it, but not very many people choose to talk about it. There's a stigma around it, and in the novel, even though race runs as an underlying current to every other issue, there are only a handful of incidences in which people explicitly talk about the issue of race or the prejudices people have. And, of course, there's no one way to go about the race issue. That's why I chose to add a deeper color to the edges of my lips, to show that race is multifaceted and can never be summed up with just one color. Okay, so that wraps up our To Kill a Mockingbird inspired makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed and that you learned a teensy bit more about the book, the key themes, or just had a nice little study break for your day. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. Harper Lee Hi guys, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I don't have concealer on right now, but uh, let's not talk about that. I realized that I didn't record a like, thank you, hey, hi, hello message after I finished my makeup look the other day because I was just so gun ho about finishing the makeup look. So here I am, thank you guys for watching. Also, I've set up my Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, if you guys wanna follow me on those or just to chat because I love chatting with people and if you guys have any suggestions about what books I should do next because it's been a while since I've been in high school <laughs> so suggestions would be helpful so leave those in the comments below if you like this video feel free to subscri subscribe but you don't have to honestly if you don't want to thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next week